Hello and welcome back. My name is Poppy Weber. I'm a qualified saddle for the Society of Master Saddlers and this evening I'm in my shed with Pumpkin, my little puppy. And we were hanging out here feeling a bit depressed about the news of lockdown and it got me thinking that perhaps I should make a video to cheer myself up and then I wondered what I could talk about while sitting in here and I thought the most common question that I get asked is how do I become a saddle fitter? I can do that from here in the comfort of my shed this evening in my onesie with my dog. So sit back, make yourself a cup of tea and hopefully, unlike Pumpkin who sleeps through all of my videos, enjoy. A few ways to become a qualified saddle fitter, but there are two main ways and both of them involve going via the Society of Master Saddlers. So the Society of Master Saddlers is like our governing body. It's the big governing body of saddlery and saddle fitting. And it is by far, without a doubt, the best governing body for saddles and saddle fitting and everything like that in the whole of the world. And I know this because in my training, there was people there from all corners of the world doing the UK training. So our training and our qualification is by far far the best across the whole world. So we're really, really, really lucky to have the Society of Master Saddlers here in the UK. We're blessed to have them, we really are. And because of that, we know that anyone that carries the Society of Master Saddler badge, whether they're a Master Saddler or a Saddle Fitter, they really are the best of the best in the world. There were people on my training course from New Zealand, Australia, Germany, America, they were all over the world. And those countries, well, a lot of those countries have their own individual training, so they don't necessarily need to come and do ours, but our training is by far the world standard of saddle fitting and saddlery. So the Society of Master Saddlers are the people that you want to train with, and we're very lucky to have them based here in the UK. For full details about the Society of Master Saddlers, pop along to their website, which is mastersaddlers.co.uk, and there's actually some stuff on there about saddle fitting and the courses and, and the routes in. But hopefully it'll help for me to explain it in words as well. So basically the two main routes into saddle fitting are via saddlery. Now remember that saddlery is different from saddle fitting. Saddlery is like making saddles, so a saddler, a master saddler, someone that does saddlery, they make the saddles, and then a saddle fitter fits those saddles that the saddler has made onto a horse. So they are two different things. So they are two different professions, saddler, saddle fitter, but a lot of people do them both. And that's one way to get into saddle fitting is to start off life as a saddler. So you can go to college and you can do a saddle recourse where you learn to become a saddler. And then from that, it's quite easy to get onto like the stepping stone into becoming a saddle fitter. The other way is to get employed by somebody who is either like a master saddler or a saddle fitter themselves and who's a member of the SMS. So the SMS, Society of Master Saddlers, their members consist of people like myself and other saddlers and things like that. So if you can find employment with one of those people and they will train you up. So for example, you could go in as like a trainee saddle fitter being employed by another saddle fitter or a saddler and then they could, you could then get into the training courses via that way. So they are the routes into the training course. And I know a lot of you will think, well, hey, once you've got onto that, that's it, there's a hard part over. But it's absolutely not. There's a huge, huge, huge amount of training that has to go on. And I know that some um, brands of saddle offer saddle fitting courses, but they are not saddle fitting courses. Some of them are like introductions to that brand saddle, but no one teaches you how to fit a saddle unless you are becoming a saddle fitter and you do the official saddle fitting course to become a qualified saddle fitter. So get onto the course either via becoming, either via the route of being a saddler and doing your saddlery courses at college. I believe that if you're going down the saddlery route, there are apprenticeships available for that and kind of government help. So that's another good thing. So you can get into it via saddlery with your saddlery conflict qualification that you've got for our college, or you have to go via the employment. Whichever way you go, you get in, you're allowed onto the first rung of what is essentially a pretty hard ladder to get to the top where you're a qualified saddle fitter. So that first rung is to be either do your college course or gain employment through a member of the SMS. So once you're on that first rung, you get to go to the introductory training. And that introductory training is a couple of days and it's really more about like the very basic things that you need to know. It doesn't teach you how to fit a saddle. You don't come away from those first couple of days of training and think, whoa, I'm a saddle fitter. You come away from there and you think, Oh God, am I doing the right thing? Because there's so much information to take in. So much more than you realise. So you go and you do your two day course and then the hard bit starts. You then need to do three years at least 
of on-the-job training where you have to do at least three years of saddle fitting experience under the guidance of a master saddler and a qualified saddle fitter and or because a master saddler can also be a qualified saddle fitter. So say you're under the guidance of a qualified saddle fitter, you also need another master saddler around to be able to help you out in times of need. So you have to do three years at least of going out saddle fitting with these people to learn your trade. This is where all the learning happens. This is where you learn the tricks of the trade. This is where you learn how to fit saddles. This is where you learn how to see if horses are lame. All of this. And during those three years, you don't just go out saddle fit. You do biomechanics training and you can do um, anatomy and physiology training and you can do all of that sort of stuff. Go out for days with farriers, go out for days with dentists, all of that sort of stuff to get as much knowledge in you as you can. Because when you go out there and you're fitting saddles by yourself, you want to have as much knowledge in you as you can, I promise you. Now, this three years experience is where a lot of people struggle when it comes to learning to be a saddle fitter. And that's because there's, like, as a saddle fitter myself, I get approached at least on a weekly basis. I have, you know, young people come up to me and say, I want to be a saddle fitter, can I come out with you and learn with you? And like, would I want to spend three years training somebody up for them to then set up a business on my doorstep. What would I gain from it? So it's often very difficult for people to find that stepping stone, for people to find that saddle fitter. So often people have to go and train with saddle fitters further away and they don't get paid a good wage because you are essentially gaining a skill from these people. You're not working for them, if that makes sense. Certainly not at the beginning anyway. So it's quite a tricky thing sometimes to get into, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible because if it wasn't possible, there'd be no saddle fitters in the world. So quite often people like myself with saddle fitters, they might employ somebody in and train them up and pay for their training even um, on the basis that they stick with them for the next number of years or things like that. So it is possible to do. And the other bonus of working for another saddle fitter and not for yourself is that they have the stock of saddles because that's something that a lot of people don't consider when they think about getting into saddle fitting is that you have to have a really good stock of saddles. You can't set up as a saddle fitter with 10 saddles because if you think about it, you need 15 inch, 16 inch, 15 inch, 15 and a half, 16, 16 and a half, 17, 17 and a half, 18, that's seven. In black and brown, that's 14. And that's only on one style of saddle. So then you have to have ones with flat backs and ones with curved backs and ones with short backs and ones with big knee blocks and ones with small knee blocks and ones with dressage and ones that jump. And you know, there's hundreds, hundreds. I think people underestimate the, the amount of financial input there is. So therefore it's really good actually if you can get underneath another saddle fitter or working for like a shop or something that they have a saddle fitter with a stock of saddles because then you have access to their stock of saddles. So you don't have to go out remortgage your house and sell everything you own in order to buy stock of saddles. Because even second hand saddles, so say say a saddle fitter has a stock of 200 saddles, say for example, and those saddles are valued anywhere between 500 and 5,000 pounds each. So 200 times by 500 is Alexa. What's two? Your device is offline. So when you have that amount of stock, you not only have to pay for that amount of stock, but then sits there and devalues essentially, because it sits there, you know, not selling, getting dust on, being used as demo saddles. Then also you have to pay for somewhere to store it because you can't just store that in your garage or in your dining room because it's an awful lot of money for the saddles and then you have to insure it and you have to do X. And, you know, so there's so much cost involved in setting up by yourself that sometimes actually it's, it's a benefit to work for another company and it's a benefit to work under another saddle fitter and sharing their stock of saddles. And there's loads of ways that you can do that and it's definitely something worth looking into. So if you are interested in this, then the first step probably before you even think about your, your training is to find somebody that will be that person for you and employ you so you can get onto that first rung of that ladder and then someone that you know will be there for three years and will help you through that three years and then you'll probably have to work for them for however many number of years afterwards. But you probably will end up wanting to stay working for them anyway because it's just going to be easier. Because presuming everything goes well, it's win-win for both of you.
bearing in mind you have to really like that person because you are basically stuck in a car with them for three years. Because what you think of saddle fitting, you know, being out fitting the saddles, it's probably only a quarter of our job. The rest of the time is spent in a car driving to the next saddle fitting. So um, whenever I have work experience um, kids in with me, that I think they are shocked at how much time we spend in the car. And they're also shocked at how badly I sing in the car. But that's a whole different story. So you've done your three years. It's on swimmingly. You love it. You found this wonderful person. You don't mind their singing in the car. And during those three years, you have also done a number of other training courses. You've also gone and done some leather work courses. You might have done some leather repair courses so you can learn how to put um, girth straps on and things like that um, and fix bits of saddles. You've also had to go and do a flocking exam where you have to um, do like a full reflock on a saddle and stitch it all back up again. And you examine doing that because without all of that, you can't move on to the next stage. The next stage is another few days worth of training. And that training isn't, it is training, but all the training, all the learning that you do really is in that three years when you're out on the job, learning on the job. And then the second bit of training with this society of martyr saddlers is more like, it's more like kind of solidifying it and just checking that you're kind of, it's a little bit like learning to drive. So you could learn to drive and you could be a really good driver and then you go to do a driving test and you realise that you haven't quite learned it in the same way as a driving test man wants you to learn it. Or lady, very sexist of me. Driving test man or lady wants you to learn it. So it's about learning that and it's about learning a little bit more about the sort of the the research behind you know why we do what we do and it's a little bit more about the veterinary side of it you know there's a vet there and the vet lectures are amazing and then we do a lot of biomechanics stuff and it's kind of just solidifying everything that we've learned and putting a slightly more sort of scientific angle on it and then we have to go away again for a few more months and we have to solidify all of that knowledge that we've learned over three years and in that other bit of training and then we're allowed to go back and if you're ready you go back and you do your exams and they are tough so I have a degree and a master's um, and my saddle fitting exam was by far the most stressful exam I've ever done. I think you put an awful lot of pressure on your shoulders with it because you spent all those years working so hard, so hard to get there and wanting it. And that's all you can really aim for as a saddle fitter is to get that. So there's an awful lot of pressure on your shoulders to pass because Another thing I forgot to mention is it's they're quite expensive exams, they're quite expensive training and it's quite an expense for an exam. So you've put all of this time, like years of your life, and you've put all of this money, and you've pinned all of your hopes on this. And you go along and you get examined, and you have saddle fitting exams, you have two separate saddle fitting exams, you have the GP saddle and a dressage saddle, and then you do like um, written ones, and you have to find faults in saddles and broken trees, and identify bits and bobs, there's lots of different exams. And you have to pass all of them, and if you do, you get that phone call or that email, tells you that you've passed and you get a little certificate to put on your wall and my certificate is my proudest certificate. I've got a lot of certificates, I've got like a five metre swimming certificate which I think I only got as a pity thing because I'm sure I can't swim five metres even. I've got lots of other certificates. I think my husband might have made me a world's best wife certificate once, something like that. Lots of certificates but by far my most proud certificate is my saddle fitting one. And that's because so much work goes into it. So please don't see us out as saddle fitters. You see us outfitting and you see us with a smile on our face and we see us skipping around and having a whale of a time. We have to work really hard to get here and we still work really hard because what you don't see is behind the scenes all the paperwork and all the saddle orders that go wrong and you, know, you order one in brown and it comes in black and then someone shouts and you know there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see but it that it's definitely worth if you're considering getting into saddle fitting, go out with a saddle fitter, even just for a week. See if you can do work experience and don't, you know, don't say to them, hey, I'm thinking of setting up in your area, can you teach me how to do it? But say you're interested in like, could, they, could you come out for a week? I take lots of, um, mainly school age children, but I take lots of people out on work experience and they tend to come for a week at a time. I don't like to do one day at a time because they don't get a full picture, but they tend to come a week at a time and almost all of them start off saying that they want to work with horses, or saddle fitting in their career and I think probably almost all of them at the end don't and that's not because I'm not nice because I am very nice and I don't think it's my singing in the car I think it is because they don't realize how 
physically hard it is. You know, we, we, we leave the house at 7 a.m. and I don't get home until 10 p.m. sometimes. And it, you're out all day in the cold and the rain and the wind and the snow. And then the summer comes, you think, yay, the sun is shining. And then you get sunburned and it's too hot and there's no air conditioning. So, it, you know, it is tough. It is stressful, but it is great. And I do love it. And it's definitely worth, if you are considering, if you're mad enough to considering working with horses, it's definitely a career to consider. So to recap really quickly, please note my dog has slept through this whole thing. Again. So to recap really quickly, you can get into it two ways, by the saddlery course, by becoming a saddler, or by getting employment with a saddler or a saddle fitter. So for example, the tack shop that's got a saddler or a saddle fitter or someone like me that's already doing it, we could employ you as an apprentice type, as a trainee saddle fitter. So either become a saddler through college or become a trainee saddle fitter or get employment through someone who's a member of the SMS, the Society of Master Saddlers. Then you go and do your first introductory training and you have three years of working your little socks off. And then you come back, you have another training, you go away and you work a little bit harder and then you come back and then you've got your exams and then hopefully you pass your exams and you get that certificate and it makes you jump for joy every time you see it. There are other governing bodies, I guess is the term, who offer saddle fitting courses. But I'm not convinced that any of them are robust or overseen in the same way that the Society of Master Saddlers one. And I and I don't know in terms of terminology, but I do know that to be able to say that you're a qualified saddle fitter, you have to be qualified with the Society of Master Saddlers. Now, a lot of these other governing bodies, shall we call them, are have names very similar to the Society of Master Saddlers. So, I'm, so the main thing I can tell you here today is go on www.mastersaddlers.co.uk and that is the Society of Master Saddlers website. If you're in any doubt of who's qualified or not qualified, you can go on there. There's like a little drop down menu on the main page, go to Saddle Fitter and then go to your area or just put the name in and just have a look. Also, you can use that search function to find somebody because if you want to go down the route of becoming a saddle fitter and you need to get employment with an SMS member, you can go on there and you can look up local people and see who is an SMS member around you and contact them that way. But if, if the training course that you are thinking of going on isn't mentioned on that website, then it is not a Society of Master Saddlers training course. So even if it has the Society name in it or it's got Master Saddlers in it or anything like that, if it's not on there, it's not a Society of Master Saddlers training course. And believe me, they're the people that you want to qualify with because you want to be, you want to be as well qualified as you can because every day you're dealing with horses and people and you can do so much damage to a horse if you do things wrong. And at least if you're qualified properly, you've got all of that training that I've just talked about. You've got all of that knowledge. You've got all of that CPD. Another thing I didn't say is that to stay a member, you have to do a refresher, like your refresher week um, every other year. And you also have to do a certain number of hours of continuous professional development every year as well. Okay, cooking by the fire. So you also have to do a certain number of CPD points, a certain number of hours of continuous professional development every year as well in order to stay qualified. So you don't just qualify and then that's it. You run out of knowledge. You qualify and then they keep making sure that your knowledge is current. So they keep you up to date with all of the, like, the latest research and everything like that to make sure that you are always... Pardon you. To make sure that you are always top of your game. I hope that was in some way useful to you and I hope that pumpkin snoring didn't put you off too much. Um, please remember that I do weekly, at least weekly, and now for a lockdown again, it's going to be oh, daily, twice a day, forever. Um, I did lots of videos with advice and not so many adventures if we were in lockdown, but I can do lots of videos with advice and chit chats and I'll do some lives as well. So don't forget to subscribe, it really helps people like me who are out of work at the moment with lockdown because that's the other thing that being a... That's another thing about being a self-employed saddle fitter is that we are on lockdown. When we're on lockdown, we do not get paid. So, pumpkin. 
so one thing that you can do to help people like me is support small businesses. So have a like or post a comment or follow us or subscribe or press the notification bell or something like that. Something that just gives us a little bit of a reason to smile. Um, if you've got any questions or queries or insights or ideas or, or want me to do a certain video about a certain thing, I've had loads of requests for um, a dissection of a Wintech saddle. If anyone has an old Wintech saddle banging about that they don't mind getting cut up, then give me a shout and I'll pay for a courier to come and collect it. I've had quite a few people asking about becoming a saddle fitter actually. So what I'll do is in the comments here below, I'll pop a little link to um, some websites and things like that that might be useful to you. Um, if you are thinking about becoming a saddle fitter, um, by all means, I you know, ask some questions, but the best thing to do would be to find your local, the local person that you would end up having to be employed through, or your local, all the colleges, the equestrian colleges, and find out who does leather work and saddlery courses, because that's the other way in. I have to say, if I did my time again, I would probably try and go via the, the leather work, like the saddlery side of things, because I do think that now I'm saddle fitting, I've, done, I've been and done lots of kind of leather work courses, like lots of short courses like bridle work one, bridle work two, bridle work three, like saddle repairs, reef locking and all of that stuff. And it's, and it's really useful, but I do wish, I do wish that maybe I'd gone down the saddle over route first and then gone into saddle fitting. Um, like I know a lot of people that have done and I just think that's definitely something to consider because a lot of people I think just think about the saddle fitting and think about being outside in, in the nice sun and it's not really it rains all the time um, but it's actually it would, it's a really good skill to have being able to make a saddle and there's loads of really cool like competitions and stuff in the SMS where they do like saddle making competitions and things um, there's a really cool lady to follow on Facebook called the Lady Saddler follow her she does really cool stuff and she's um, a relatively recently qualified saddler. Um, I don't think she's going to get into saddle fitting. She might, I don't know. But um, you can see the like, really cool things that she makes and the saddles that she makes and stuff. It's just, it's just really cool. And I also think that it would be nice for there to be more um, young people coming into the trade and also girls, although there are a few girls coming in now. But yeah, anyway, hope that helped. Have a lovely evening. I hope the lockdown news hasn't affected too many people. And take care and have a lovely, lovely lovely week whatever it is you're doing and stay tuned and I'll speak to you really soon. Take care.